been out about uh, the uh, how the uh, Zonda commander disposed of the victims. So as we said, the victims were originally buried in long pits in the Valdlager until September 42. About 100,000 victims were buried in this way. However, from September 42, the, the Nazis no longer wanted to just bury bodies and leave evidence, so they decided from then on, all victims coming to uh, Kumhof would be cremated. And in fact, they took it a step further, they decided to dig up all of the 100,000 bodies that had already been buried and also cremate them. So, as I said, they built huge experimental field crematoria in the Valdlager, some is 17 meters long, <laughs> huge, uh, and very, actually, complex structures. So they were brick built. They also had air ducts underneath. They also had a space for Jewish Arbeid's commander members to go under the uh, crematoria to take out ashes, etc., etc. So these were actually quite sophisticated structures. As I said, there is... Uh, full evidence of, of six and possibly two or three more crematoria. Also, as part of the cremation process, there were many uh, uh, large remnants that could be not disposed of easily. So uh, the Nazis brought in a bone grinding machine powered by electric motor. So they ground down the remnants of the uh, what had not been burned in the field crematoria uh, into obviously small pieces, and this is what they put in the sacks and took to the river near the Zavadka mill to be deposited in the river. This is a, a photograph from uh, 2006 of the of the representation from the uh, when the memorial was first built in uh, the 60s of the f first mass grave. So this is when they were still burying uh, the victims. Again, uh, very interesting uh, photograph from Judge Bednash and uh, his investigation of 45. This is the uh, investi investigating committee visiting the wild area. And what they find is many remnants. They find, for example, uh, railway tracks. The railway tracks were used uh, in building the, f the field crematorium. So not everything from the uh, death camp has been destroyed. There, are, there is still evidence uh, when Judge Bednash gets there in '45 as to what went on. So bricks. So for example, even now, if you go to uh, some of the agricultural greenhouses near Kumhof, you can find some of the original burned bricks that were used in the field crematorium. And when they were just trying to destroy the evidence, they gave these to a local farmer who built greenhouses. And you can actually go there and you can actually see the burnt bricks that were used in actually the crematoria. So there were many things existed still, uh, even though the, the Nazis tried to destroy all the evidence. Again, another picture of the uh, Valdlager showing some of the remnants of the tracks used in the crematorium. This is from one of the excavations of the field crematoria in uh, the Valdlager. This is one of the concrete, these were sophisticated field crematoria. This is one of the air floor pipes made of concrete that you used to actually provide air to the uh, field crematoria. Again, during the excavations uh, undertaken in the 80s and 90s, even now they're still pulling up uh, bricks that have been burnt and fired uh, when they're used as part of the crematorium. Again, strong evidence as to what went on there. This, very interestingly, this is the foundations on which the bone crushing machine was placed uh, during the uh, operation in the in the first period of uh, yeah. And this is yeah. This is not, but this is the, the type of uh, uh, machine that it would would be used to power the uh, bone crushing machine. This was not manually operated. It was operated with a with a uh, generator.
Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, strewn across the whole area is is obviously uh, remnants of the victims. So I also wanted to talk a bit about the perpetrators. So Zonder Commander Kumhoff, this is the name of the commando uh, that organized the Kumhoff death camp. It was a commando made up of two parts. First part being a commando of SD and Gestapo from Posen, uh, SD Gestapo from Lippenstadt, SD Gestapo and some from Hohenstalzer SD Gestapo. They were the much smaller part of the commando, they were the organizers, they were the leaders. There was also a second part of the commando, the VAC commando, made up of Schutzpolizei and Gendarmerie. These were normal policemen, they were assigned to Kumhoff. They didn't volunteer, they were just assigned as a normal duty. I have no testimonies of anybody having refused service. It was, this was just seen as a normal task in the Vatiga. In the first and second periods, the SD, uh, Gestapo commander never exceeded more than 12 or 14 men. So really, the, the people who were organizing the killings in, in Como were these 12 and 14 men. The Schutzpolizei and Gendarmes, they're there as guards. They're not organizers. In the first period, the VAC commando comprised approximately 20 to 120 men. So at the beginning, in, in December 41, there were approximately 12, 20 Schutzpolizei. They soon figured out that the process was more complicated than they thought, so they brought in more Schutzpolizei from Lippmannstadt. All the Schutzpolizei in the first period came from Lippmannstadt. So Lippmannstadt uh, Battalion 1. And, uh, so Lippmannstadt Battalion 1 and 2. In the second period, the VAC commander was much smaller. It was between 30 and 70 men. And they were mainly gendarmes. First period... Okay, I, I, I'm writing a book on the, on the perpetrators. So I've been working for, yeah, for a long time on uh, trying to piece together who were the members, who they were, what they did. Interesting for me, the VAC commander in the first period of Schutz for Polizei, these are all guys in their early 20s. Yeah? Most of them are volunteers. Most of them come from the, uh, the Rhineland. So Aachen, Duisburg, these sort of areas. So they, they come there, seem to come there. When I looked at the testimonies in Ludwigsburg, a lot of these people were back living in the same places when they did the investigations in the 60s, and there were quite a lot of them were friends. They were friends before they went. They went there together. They were in, in uh, Kumhof together. In the second period, we're talking mainly gendarmes, and these are older men. These are men in their 40s, because everybody, obviously everybody in their 20s has been, is either fighting uh, on the Russian front or is in the army or has been sent with a SS police division, for example, to Yugoslavia to, to actually fight. So in the second period, we're talking about much older men, talking gendarmes. As I said earlier, in the first period, there was also a Polish Arbeitskommando commando made of eight prisoners from Fort Seven. This is a, a photograph from uh, his uh, Russia file. This is a photograph of uh, Stenberg Peter Herbert Langer. He was the first commandant of Kumhof. He also was the man responsible for the killing of mental patients in Novartica. So there is a, I think Mr. Herr Her Neumaker did mention it, there is a strong connection between the killing of mental patients in Novartica and Kumhof. And it's one of the things we've been trying to prove, which men served in, in the Zonda commander that Langer used to kill mental patients, and how many of them ended up in Kumhof. He died in 45, we think, when the Russians in the Russian uh, battle for Berlin. So he was not put on trial. This is the second commandant, Hauptsturmfuhrer Hans Bortmann. Lango was in Kumhof. He set up the camp in November, December 41. He was probably there till March, April 42. He then went back to Berlin and Bortmann came as commandant. He was commandant from uh, March, April 42 to the end of the first period, <coughs> March, April 43. He then came back from another assignment in Yugoslavia for the second period. 
he was taken prisoner by the British but committed suicide when in British uh, hands in 45 obviously he didn't want to go on trial this is a photograph of Hauptschaftur uh, Albert Platter he was a deputy commandant in the first period in the second period, the zone, uh, after the end of the first period, the Zonda commander was sent uh, as part of the uh, SS Prince Eugen division to Yugoslavia to fight partisans. He was killed in Yugoslavia, so he didn't come back for the second period. This is a very in interesting uh, piece of evidence I found in uh, the Bundes Archive in Berlin. This is from Albert Platter's uh, Russia file, his uh, SS uh, marriage application. This is a letter from uh, while Albert Plata was in Kumhof, <coughs> he was trying to piece together his family tree so he could make his uh, application for approval to be married. So he was in discussions with, a, with his church back in his hometown about his family tree. So the church in Germany is sending letters to Albert Plata, SS Zonder Commander Kumhof, discussing his family tree. This is one of the few pieces of evidence that tells us what the name of the commander was because there is some question as to what actually the name of the uh, Zonder Commander called, what was Kumhof called. But this is, is, is definite evidence. It's SS, SS Zonder Commander Kumhof. Some people think it was called SS Zonder Commander Langer after the, the commandant or SS Zonder Commander Butman. But yeah, I think this is pretty uh, uh, good proof that it was SS Zonder Commander Kumhof. And lastly, this is Hauptschaufuhr uh, Walter Pieler. He was deputy commandant in the second period. And he was <coughs> captured by the Poles, put on trial, and hung. Uh, so, in terms of the perpetrators, there were approximately, of the 210, I estimate, members of the Zonda Commando in both periods, 20 were put on trial. The four Walter Peter was the only member, senior member of the commando to be put on trial. The other three were already <coughs> dead. Peter went on trial by the Poles. The West Germans had a trial in Bonn between 63 and 65 of, if I remember, 11 members of the commando. There was only really one senior member put on trial, and that was one of the gas van drivers, Gustav Laps. The others were, were Schutz Polizei. Uh, also, interestingly enough, uh, I spent a long time in Austria, the Austrians did some investigations, sort of. Basically what they took was information from uh, Ludwigsburg, from the West German investigations, and sort of did an investigation, but not really. So they investigated six members of the Zonderkommando, uh, but none of them were found guilty. <coughs> also interestingly for me, there were another 20 members of the Zonderkommando who were identified, Schutzpolizei, who gave evidence and provided testimony to... Uh, the German, West German investigations for the bomb trial. So approximately, I have names of 171 members of the Zonda Commando. I think there were more like 210, 220, because the gendarmes in the second period weren't there for very long. Some of them were only there for a month, so we don't really have the names. So I have 171 names, uh, and after the war, the Germans... Uh, in the 60s tracked down about 40 and put on trial 11 so. and I will leave it at that thank you